Yeah, so uh, thanks for having me. This talks about My Skin Selfie, so about the development of a free app for skin self-monitoring. And this is very much an ongoing research project, um, so it's great fun to be able to talk about it today. And that the direction of it remains, it's not completely clear where, where it's going to end up, I think. So we're going to go about the why, uh, then how it's, been, how it's been put together, a bit about the functionality of it, uh, some simple stuff on usability that we've done, and then also a few ideas about maybe future plans. So we've talked about this already, that everyone's been in clinic when the patient's come in and said, I've got nothing to show you, doctor, it's all gone, but I've been taking some pictures and I want to show you what they are. Or another patient that you may be discharged, saying everything was fine, has come back and said, I'm sure this is getting worse. I've been taking pictures and I've, I've got them. They're, they're right here. And they start flicking through. <laughs> they go, I'm sure they're, they're great pictures, doctor. I'm, they're, here they are. And then finally, you come to a picture. And I think I've had a number of these over a few weeks. I thought to myself, that there must be a better way. There must be a way that we can help the patient to monitor their own skin in a way that would keep all the images together. And I wondered, could we make an app to do this? We've heard already that smartphones are now incredibly common. I heard the figure of eight out of 10 new phones are smartphones. People do still buy little Nokia, um, you know, rather simpler ones. Um, but generally, people are buying smartphones. The camera quality is absolutely excellent. And also, there are issues about um, even when you want to get a photo taken, if you're working out in a, a remote clinic or the, the, the medical photographers aren't available, sometimes it's not possible. And that's when people will sometimes reach for their own phones or a, a camera. And I also had the idea that maybe we could just get the patients to take the pictures. And then the patients would own the pictures you wouldn't have any of these problems about consent, you wouldn't have to worry about all of that. And so that was another driver for trying to start this project. So the aims of it were, the things I thought about, were to develop an app with a single storage location which was away from the camera rolls. So that was important because we've talked about these issues about if you take photos in the camera roll, they can get integrated with people's iCloud and all sorts of other things. So the, the photos had to be away from that. I wanted automatic dating, the ability to make comments, maybe some way to improve image consistency as well. Um, and it had to be stored securely, uh, encrypted, preferably with remote storage, because clearly not all phones have large memories, and also the ability to have the picture secure if a phone got lost was also going to be important. We were then going to test it to make sure it worked um, in a helpful, functioning way. And then finally, uh, the, the last part of the research was going to be to actually think about which clinical situations would the self-monitoring be most useful in, obviously away from the, the fairly obvious ones. So then I thought, well, how, how can I do this? And I, I did know that the, the computing science department at Newcastle University has been growing a lot over, over, the, over the years. So this is actually, this is the, the picture at the start was the bridges on the time. This is the RVI, this whole block here, and the, our clinic is basically where the H is. Um, and this is where the university is, and about here is the computing science department. And I had a look online, and it turned out that there was a group called Open Lab. So this is about 80 um, researchers who are an interaction design and ubiquitous computing research group uh, led by um, Patrick. And they'd, as it happened, they'd just won a £5 million engineering and physical sciences research council grant where they were going to train PhD students to develop projects to increase uh, digital working in health, local government, and education. And so I went along and pitched the idea. And thankfully, for, for two reasons, they thought it was, it, it was quite good. Partly, I think the coding challenges were interesting, and they thought this would be a good way to teach people how to generate images, store them, etc. And also, they were interested in, in, obviously, the applications for patients. We did then, before we started, we had a bit of a look around. We didn't want to just completely copy something that was already available. Um, having been to the conference over the last two days, I think we possibly have been trying to copy things that maybe are available. Um, but when we started out, we did uh, have a fairly good look, and there are lots of apps, as, as we all know. We felt that the ones for self-monitoring um, were quite inflexible. Often people have built apps with a very clear idea that they want to monitor moles. They have lots of questions you have to fill in. We wanted to do something just far more open and uh, flexible. And also, we've had talks on this. There's endless other apps doing all sorts of other things, many for paid services, which are of dubious quality. Many of it, it's linked to moles. Some are attempting to make diagnoses. 
And also, it's amazing how many of the apps just don't seem to work that have been tried and then are no longer supported. So off we went to, to build it, and they used a coding platform called Xamarin, which I think is based on a, a, a language called C Sharp. And what you can do with Xamarin is you write the code, and then it will, it will convert it into iOS or Android. So it actually halves your time to, uh, for the coding development. Um, the main problem which that couldn't do, though, was that the actual interaction with the phones was quite complex. So to be able to access the code for the iPhone's phone or the Android phone um, was quite detailed to then be able to just use the phone alone without the images then going into the normal camera roll. All that was solved, though. Uh, we went for full encryption, um, Microsoft Azure cloud storage, and throughout the development, the project has been on patient-held data to try and avoid the issues of consent and all that kind of thing. There were various rounds of workshops, lots of prototypes, and eventually we got it registered with the MHRA. Whether it is a Type 1 device, not really sure, but we thought we'd get it all approved anyway. Much of this is, in fact, self-declaration, so it's not too difficult. The bigger problem with the university approvals, as I'm sure people know, but we sort of waded through the porridge of the university bureaucracy, and finally we're allowed to put the apps on the app stores and put our little info um, website as well. So here is my skin selfie. So this is the um, first page you come to when you download it. You make an account just with a name and an email. Then you can start to store your images. And so you basically create folders. It's so all it is. You make folders of whatever you want, um, different areas of skin. So just to take you through making a new folder, you click on the new folder button. You then fill in which body part, um, which part of that body part, a free text box. You can name it or say what it is, trial a new treatment. You can say when it started, and then you go to take your first picture. So, sorry, then you confirm those details, and it creates your folder. Then you click on the, the folder, and this appears, and then you click on the camera button to take your first picture. When you take a picture, um, it's dated, and if you scroll down, you can add some notes, treatment notes. The shot conditions was one of the guys who was interested in digital photography thought this would be interesting. We haven't used it so much, but we were interested in the variability in how the skin appears on the different um, lighting conditions. So that's what that was about. Then you get a little thumbnail, and as you accumulate your images, they all stack up in a line which you can scroll through. When you come to take your next image, this was where we came in with our image consistency function. So this is called an onion skin or a template. So this is actually the first image, which is faded out slightly. There's a slider bar here so that you can make it clearer, or if you slide it all the way down, that image can completely go. You then come to take your second image, and here you are lining it up. You can see the first image in the background and then gradually you move it around until you get a complete overlay. Uh, and in this way, with a bit of practice, you can get images that can line up quite well. So it does help you to get consistency, which we felt would be useful, particularly for the size of images on you know, faces, hands, things like that. There's then a function if you want to compare two images. Uh, you select compare for the two that you want, and they come up like that, centered around the center of the photograph. Another example of the comparison function, this was actually my son on holiday. He presented with this dermatosis. And uh, I've noted, using all my skills of observation as a dermatologist, that there'd be some blue there had been blueberries at breakfast. And so I prescribed a wash, and <laughs> I haven't invoiced him yet, but I will. And then took a few pictures, and when you can compare them, you can see you get a pretty good good comparison, and I think here you can see as well with this is an iPhone 6S, you do get really quite high, high quality with good, um, good image quality. So then we have done some uh, fairly simple Likert scale based usability studies. So this was a 50 person study um, recruited online through the university, um, people with skin conditions. I won't go through them all in detail, but by and large, most people felt that the instructions and terminology and everything was fine, it was easy to use, but the age range was about 18 to 30. There was a couple of people in their 40s, 
some of the really old people. So by and large, it was, it was young people, younger than me, who were very used to fiddling with apps, um, which may not be the case for some of the, the older users. With some of our functions that we thought were very clever, um, there is a reminder function. People didn't seem to rate that very much. Um, would they use it frequently? Again, we didn't know how severe their skin problems were, so it's difficult to know what to make of all this. By and large, though, this group felt that it, it was a fairly easy thing to use, and they were fairly satisfied that it did what it said on the tin. So, so, so far, so good. So here's a few pictures. So this was one of the, the um, subjects. I don't know whether he was using any active treatment, but these were pictures taken over about uh, two weeks, and he clearly followed the, the advice, was taking pictures um, with similar lighting conditions, with the same background. And if you were, say, trying to use this in a clinical study to see how things were um, improving over time, you'd get some pretty good consistent pictures from this with this user. However, with this one, who didn't follow the guidance quite so well, clearly there's a few problems. Here we are in the study, the kitchen, the bedroom, <laughs> different times of day. It looks like she may have a bit of hand eczema, but really this will be the kind of... Uh, set of photos where you'd have that, that phrase that I've heard a few times, on the basis of these clinical images, uh, please refer into clinic, I think. Um, it is just for self-monitoring, of course, but I don't think really this sort of quality would be that helpful. So there are some issues about the, the way that people are using it. Also, um, some people with older cameras, there, there were some focusing issues. If you've got an older Android phone, not always so good. And... Uh, the lecturer from Brisbane mentioned the problem of taking pictures yourself. There is a bit of, you know, there is a slight tendency for a bit of wobble sometimes. Um, we did talk to people about getting somebody else to do the, uh, the photos, which is a, which is a one solution. Uh, but that's something that I think just takes a bit of practice. So this guy clearly there, not so helpful, but here is an absolutely excellent picture with very good, very good focus. So in terms of um, problems we've encountered and things that we think we're going to have to change um, as the study goes on, when this was set up, because of the issues about the camera memory and also we sort of thinking about security, we configured the app so that after each photo was taken, it would be immediately encrypted and uploaded to the cloud. But what that means is you need quite a good signal to be able to do that. When we've started to review patients who've been using it in the clinic, we're on level two of a seven-story building with a helipad made of steel on the roof and lots of metal everywhere. And the, most people's phone networks aren't very good. We do have public Wi-Fi in the hospital, um, but it's a tiered-based system where the top tier is the trust-proof devices, the second tier is something else, and the third tier is public. And on the day that they made it free, it went from the paid was five people a day, the day it went free, it was 2,500 people a day. So sometimes the Wi-Fi isn't even that good. So for that reason, we are actually going to be changing it so that you can have an offline storage option, um, which means the images will be kept on the phone for longer, whereas previously the thumbnails was cached for 48 hours and then they'd go. Um, we also think that probably the ability to share or export images, so some patients may not, may not want to keep the images within Skin Selfie, they may want to have them elsewhere, at the moment, the only way you could export an image out of Skin Selfie would be to bite a screenshot and move it on. We've also had ideas about whether or not doctors should be able to add comments. Could you evolve a kind of a Dropbox style share this folder um, facility? We all got a bit worried then about if you start sharing the images, how do you then track how many shares you've done? It all gets quite complicated. That's an idea we're still thinking about. Um, and also, perhaps this is a bit old fashioned since. Mobile's meant to be the future, but the idea of being able to interrogate the server via the web, which we can do uh, using the Microsoft Azure software, um, but in a more functional way, is also something that we've talked about. Um, this is now just starting. We, we are doing a, a, a wider usability study in patients, hopefully with a much wider uh, age range. So pretty much anyone who's got a smartphone, we're trying to get people in their 60s and 70s just to see how useful they find it, how easy it is to use. What's important, of course, it's easy to, well, it's quite easy to make a gadget, but is it actually useful? Um, we need to actually get some evidence that people find it helpful and also try to be more clear in which clinical areas is self-monitoring really going to be um, a good idea and something that we should be promoting. 
Other things, I've mentioned this briefly, we think it could be quite a good app for research projects. Currently, for most clinical research projects, patients come in every four weeks. They have an examination clinically and things are recorded. With an app like Skin Selfie, you could easily configure it to push the images to a different server for a uh, research project. And you could get patients to be taking pictures um, every two or three days. And that way, you get far more detail of how they were progressing with their treatment. Having cracked taking images away from the uh, camera roll, we've now got the facility to have these secure images on the cloud. It wouldn't be that difficult to convert this technology into a free, cheap, easy to use form of teledermatology. One of the big barriers, I think, having been at the conference for a day and a half, is that quite a lot of, the, quite a lot of people are trying to replicate the clinic in teledermatology. And I was very taken by the, uh, the talk from Greece yesterday, talking about how quickly dermatologists can identify lesions. In many ways, it's a very quick thing. And I could imagine a situation for Telederm where the GP would have their mobile phone, they would have a lesion, they'd take a picture, say, what is this? You'd be there with your headset on the Telederm clinic. You'd know immediately within five seconds what it was. And that way, you probably could see some real economic advantages with very quick decision-making, yes, no, yes, no, do this, do that. Whereas trying to replicate a whole clinic situation, I think is always going to make it economically quite challenging. Another idea that we've had is um, our juniors, as we were shown in the last talk, people are using their cameras in ways that are completely against the current uh, trust guidelines. These guidelines aren't going to change. I don't think trusts are ever going to be happy for people to be using uh, their own phones or unencrypted digital cameras to take um, photos. Again, we could adjust skin selfie quite easily to turn it into a tool where the registrars could take images, securely store them in the cloud, come back from their on call, wherever they've been, to show them to the consultant. You could easily then be archiving things in a cloud, keep them forever or 10 years if you need to. So the, these are all just ideas that we've got for the future. It is an ongoing project. Uh, we are interested in research collaborations. If anybody does have any ideas that they think will be useful, then we'd be very, very happy to hear from you. And I'd obviously like to thank all the staff at Open Lab uh, who've, uh, who've really led this, uh, volunteers from the university, patients at the RBI, and the EPSRC who've really been funding this. Thanks very much.